Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to episode 70 of the Nindy Nation podcast. I'm Jeff, and can I just say that I freaking called it. Last week, I suggested that some kind of Nintendo-related announcement was coming on Wednesday because all of the eShop deals expired on Tuesday, and they otherwise almost always expire on Thursday. Lo and behold, there was a Pokemon Direct on Wednesday announced on Tuesday, and I feel like a genius. <laughs> Now that we've got that pat on the back out of the way, this is Nindy Nation, your weekly dose of everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. On this episode, we'll be taking a look at every new indie game hitting the eShop from June 20th through June 26th, and then we'll stroll through our picks for the best indie deals currently available, and this week's good, y'all. Each episode of Nindy Nation posts on podcast feeds Sunday night and on Monday over on YouTube, where you can also see the brand new Nindies We Love focused on five action games primed to keep your Joy-Cons synced. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation, and for everything else Nintendo-related, check out our friends over at the Nintendo Village. Now, every week we start with the games that weren't on the list of last week's new releases, and we call those the Neglected Nindies. However, that list usually has a few shovelware titles, and it made sense to start separating those out. I asked you what to name that segment, and in the YouTube comments you came out in droves, so thanks for all of the good laughs. We might bounce around between names, but at least for now, we're going to use the suggestion from commenter Eyes of Mimesis, who went right for the alliterative sweet spot with Nindy Nonos. <laughs> Enough chit chat though, it's time for some games. Here are the 10 Nindies released since episode 69. I'm really surprised that Clay Entertainment let their Switch port of Invisible Ink slip by with such little fanfare. This would have been one of the picks of the week had we, you know, known about their game last week. Invisible Ink is a very polished and very fun stealth-slash-hacking type of espionage game that takes place on a grid, and it is wonderful. I definitely suggest looking into Invisible Ink, and if 20 bucks is too much to bite off right now, throw it in your wish list because it's an older game that will almost certainly see some deep discounts before too long. Strangers of the Power 3 is what indie games are all about. This $10 super traditional PS1 era RPG is developed by Tuomo Lane, who almost certainly did every bit of the work, from the simplistic 3D environments to the hand-drawn character portraits all by himself. He even references himself in the first person in the game's description. I'm not sure the game looks all that great, but it does seem to scratch a very specific nostalgia itch, so I might buy this one just to show a little support for a truly independent title. And imagine my surprise when I had to enter my birth date before being able to see any more information about Behold the Kickman. I'm actually still not really sure why I had to do that. It's rated M, but I can't tell why. This is a... Well, this might be my favorite description ever, so as a person who knows very little about any type of sport, I'm going to let the developer do their own talking. Ultimate Football Edition Behold the Kickman is a football game made by someone who has no understanding of or interest in what is affectionately known as the Wonderful Game. Start at the bottom of the big boring British football spreadsheet system and grind your way up, grueling match after grueling match to become the best at the football that anyone's ever seen, and win the World Cup for your mantelpiece. Features, passing, kicking, tackling, squad management, and doing goals over and over. There's even a full story mode crammed with overblown melodrama and inane decisions to be made. (laughs) I love it. Behold the Kickman released last week by Ant Workshop and at only $3.99, this might be a game I pick up simply out of morbid curiosity. At only four games in for the week, I'm excited to say that we've got a Nindy trifecta already on our hands. Head Up Games released Colt Canyon, the 2D pixel art western shooter developed by Retrific for $13.49, and it features procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. Pretty unique art style here, and the concept of having to venture out, defeat the person holding your partner hostage, and then returning home safely is pretty neat. Five Nights at Freddy's has another iteration that released last week for $7.99 from Click Team. This one is called Sister Location and has you playing as a robot repair person at Circus Baby's Pizza World. Looks like a good way to soil yourself. 
Wind Kings is some kind of 2D multiplayer battle game that looks like a poor man's towerfall, but with Vikings and grenade launchers. It's developed by Lemondo or Lemondo Games and released for five bucks. Checo in the Castle of Lucio is an 8-bit 2D platformer with clear influences across many NES classics. Not sure this one does anything particularly special, but it looks competent enough and was released by Fantastico Studio for $4.99. Now, on to this week's Nindy No-Nos. Three games that I just can't bring myself to recommend under any circumstances. I should ask Sabek to sponsor it because they've been such a mainstay that we had to make a separate segment of the show, and they kick things off with Paint, which is basically Microsoft Paint on your Switch for 10 bucks. Lost Lands Dark Overlord is an extremely generic static screen point-and-click adventure by 5BN Studio for $6.99. And last but not least is Kuki Yomi 2 Consider It More New Era by G-Mode. And this game is... What is this? It's $3.74 more than it should be, I can tell you that much. I guess you look at various social situations in black and white and move a red item to de-escalate the situation? What is this? Nindy no-nos notwithstanding, try saying that three times fast, not a bad week for our neglected brethren. Invisible Ink is the clear winner here, but both Cold Canyon and the hilarious Behold the Kickman look like solid options too. If you're picking any of these up, let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Now that we've looked back, let's look ahead to next week and check out the whopping 24 releases hitting the eShop from June 20th through the 26th. Ultimate Games kicks off the week on June 22nd with Swords and Sandals Spartacus for $12.99. It's a retro action platformer with clear influence from Castlevania, but it seems to be much larger and moves a bit quicker. Another solid release by Ultimate. Next up on June 23rd is a release by Firebrand Games, who has a history of mediocre to good racing games on handheld platforms, but this new release is called Conjurer Andy's Repeatable Dungeon and is a card-based dungeon crawler featuring <clears throat> procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. <laughs> That's all well and good, but it's seven bucks, and for that price, it looks way too much like a mobile game. On June 24th, Raw Fury, in partnership with developers Monkey Moon and Black Muffin Studio, interesting names, release Night Call for $19.99. This narrative adventure is set in a noir world where you're not a detective, but you must help track down and stop a serial killer. The non-linear approach and better-than-usual level of polish should make Night Call one to consider if narrative adventures are up your alley. Holy Potatoes, What the Hell! is actually the name of the next title on June 24th by Rising Star Games. I've considered the other two or three games in this Holy Potatoes cinematic universe, but I never end up jumping in because I can't ever really figure out what any of these games are, and that remains the case here with What the Hell. It seems to be some kind of evil cooking game in hell, and it's $15 even, so just like the other releases, this one's probably going to be a dollar or so before too long. And the game that was the biggest pleasant surprise to me this week is easily Ant Ventor, a gorgeous cinematic adventure game for $7.99 by Loopy Mod. This team did something really cool here. Playing as an ant, the world around you, I mean, it has to be actual full motion video with the characters and UI imposed on top because it really looks like your character is interacting with and moving through the real world, but on a teeny tiny scale. It's very cool looking and it's been the recipient of a handful of indie game awards and I can see why. At the very least, check out the trailer for Ant Ventor. And kicking off this week's big Thursday drop on June 25th is the creatively named Truck and Logistics Simulator by Aerosoft, and it is 40 freaking dollars. Basically, you drive around any kind of vehicle involved in the supply chain. And one of the more intricately deep and apparently thought-provoking entries in the chill puzzle game category is The Almost Gone, which comes to us from Happy Volcano and Play Digis. It's some kind of surreal diorama thing, but it looks neat, and it has a demo if you want to try it out for yourself. The Almost Gone launches on June 25th, and it'll set you back 15 bucks. 
and apparently the record-breaking YouTuber PewDiePie's love for self-aware mobile games have now extended to the Switch as his game Poop D Chapter 1 releases for 4 bucks and is a twin-stick dungeon crawler all about poop. Like, if you thought Binding of Isaac was gross, it's got nothing on this. Oh, and it's got in-game purchases. I'd tell you more about this one, but I'm frankly tired of looking at it. It's really gross. Our next release is just wonderful. It's a really bad-looking World War II air combat game of sorts, but Iron Wings tries to be all about the drama in the lives of the pilots. <laughs> the cover art alone looks like a soap opera. How much is this? Okay, it's 12 bucks, but you're not going to buy it. I just love what Naps Team did to create what tries to be a romantic, patriotic American story, and then totally butchers the description. Really bad. When I copied and pasted the description I'm about to read to you, Microsoft Word just about had an aneurysm. There are red and blue squigglies everywhere, even green ones. I didn't even know Word had green grammatical errors. Here are some of my favorites. <clears throat> Iron Wings is primarily an arcade game, a flying shooter where shooting won't be enough, where each weapon or tool mounted on each of the two planes will have its role on completing each mission and you'll have to deal with the decision on what to do and how to do it. Whew! Take a breath there. Punctuation, guys. Extra tools as chaffs and magnetron as radar countermeasures, photo camera to report detailed visuals of some objects. Wise choice of camouflages will also influence your visibility to enemies and consequentially, which isn't a word, will help you avoid some damages. Game starts during a fundraising in New York and rapidly moving into war operations with the Operation Husky. There you go. Roca Play, the German developer most known for Harvest Life, a budget clone of Harvest Moon, and Stranded Sales, a budget clone of Stardew Valley, comes The Forgotten Land, a budget clone of Puzzle Quest. The Forgotten Land has the same match three puzzle formula mixed with RPG elements, but it sets it in a historical fantasy world instead. It launches for $9.99, a 33% discount right out of the gate. Peter Hajima releases Unitide for $2.99 and provides this extremely helpful description for his game. Unitide is a minimalistic and relaxing puzzle game. The simple goal is to finish all blocks. You do so by moving all blocks in one direction, up, left, down, or right. The blocks have to use each other to be able to finish. There are 50 levels. Thanks for that, Peter. Digerati is back this week with a pretty cool twist on a dungeon-crawling RPG formula called Tower of Time. At first glance, this game looks like a squad-based Diablo, but it actually plays out in a turn-based fashion as the real-time combat ensues. There's a ton of content available to unlock and deep RPG systems to keep things interesting, and you can check out Tower of Time when it launches on June 25th for $19.99. Filed under Games That You Would Never Play If Someone Is Watching comes Pachi Pachi on a Roll for $6.99 from Dolores Entertainment. Always a publisher to release the titles that nobody else would publish, this one seems to be no different. It's got a mix of various parlor games, Pinball, Pachinko, Breakout. It doesn't look too bad, honestly, but then they decide to throw in two incredibly skimpy anime girls with gravity-defying breasts so large that they alter the tide of the Pacific Ocean. Well, that's not too bad. I can look past that. You might be thinking, but I'm not done yet. Because they've managed to throw in an element of the game that apparently causes these two voluptuous fictional characters to somehow lose their clothes throughout each minigame. It's, uh, well, it's something. Happy Net Corporation is a new name on the eShop, but one that is almost certainly plotting to take over the world with a name like that. It's fitting then that the release this week is Brigadine The Legend of Runersia, which is a war simulation game that plays out like a game of Risk, but with a world and characters right out of titles like the Fire Emblem series. If your ears are perked up at the thought of a full-blown video game based on board games like Risk, then you're probably going to find something to like here. But you might want to try the demo first, because when Brigadine hits the eShop, it's going to do so with a $50 thud. Tate Entertainment releases Urban Trial Tricky, which, if you guessed by the name, is indeed one of a seemingly unlimited list of clones based on the Trials series by Ubisoft. 
Ride a dirt bike through ridiculous scenarios as quickly and stylishly as you can. Score big points. Repeat. There are so many of these on the Switch, it's hard to see anything unique that this one offers. Plus, it launches for 13 bucks with only 30 levels, and the Trial series is often the same price or less, but includes over 100 levels and a demo that is almost the full scope of Urban Trial Tricky's entire game. As I am consistently impressed with the recent output from Forever Entertainment, they are back again this week with Toaga Among Shadows, and it's up there among the best-looking releases of the week. You play as a tribal god of sorts, standing on a platform battling waves of enemies that approach from all directions. The gameplay is, I guess, a twin-stick shooter, but it's really much more than that, and staying stationary on the platform gives it an almost active tower defense type of feel. I've played a little bit of Tawaga already, and I've really enjoyed my time with its approach to roguelike progression that helps you power up and make it a bit further before succumbing to the shadows with each additional run. I definitely suggest checking out Tawaga Among Shadows this week and think the launch price of $13.49 is a great value. But if you throw it on your wish list, it'd be a very easy recommendation at 7 bucks or so. Retro fans pay attention because Nape Games have bundled three of the games in their Ployed series into one title for 12 bucks called Ployed Saga, and it's a great bundle. The first two entries play kind of like a Mega Man game and fall somewhere between 8 and 16 bit. One of the titles is a reimagining or modernized take on the original, and the third title is a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up. All three games are solid and worth a few bucks, and if you end up enjoying the titles, the collection has a ton of extras that fans will certainly appreciate. I can understand not wanting to jump into something completely unknown for 12 bucks if you're not sure about the series yet, but if that's the case, throw Ployed Saga on your wish list, and we'll let you know the next time it's on sale. Topping off the Thursday drop is Nindy newcomer UTC Asterion with a release for JRPG fans in Grimshade. This is a very traditional turn-based JRPG with anthropomorphic animals teaming up with humans to, what else? Save the world. The art style is a blend of cell shading and hand-drawn, which is a little hit or miss, just like the overall reviews I've seen, and $21 is honestly asking a bit too much, but I do think Grimshade does enough things right to be a title to consider, you know, some point in the future at half price. And we've got five more games, all releasing on June 26th, just in time for the weekend. Sudoki is Nestor Yavorsky's chill, relaxing puzzle take on Sudoku, and it's releasing for $2.99. Urban Flow is the port of a mobile game by Baltoro Games about creating efficient traffic patterns in a top-down city, which seems way too expensive at $14.99. Boombit releases their fourth game to use the same game engine, this one called City Driving Simulator, and it just looks awful. It's nine bucks, you just drive around from point A to point B, and again, they've failed to remove the mobile game touch controls which take up at least a third of the screen. No More Robots and Brave at Night, both of which sound more like games than publishers and developers, are releasing Yes Your Grace, which is a pixelated 2D resource management game where you hear the concerns of your kingdom and decide whether to help them or save the resources for the next problem. Honestly, that sounds like being a parent, so I personally don't think I need to pay $17 to say no to needy whiny people. And finally, rounding out the week is Radaleka's $10 visual novel, A Summer with the Shiba Inu. And yes, this is a visual novel about dogs living on an island of Shiba Inus, told with awful clip art that makes the entire game look like a meme, and I think that's on purpose? So what's our pick of the week? I'm not sure. There are five titles that do stand out to me, though. Invisible Ink, Ant Venter, Tawaga, Ployed Saga, and Tower of Time all call out to a different audience, but each one looks like a worthwhile use of your time and money. What do you think? Anyone else out there played the Ployed games before? Are you interested in the crazy, hyper-realistic art of Ant Ventor? Let me know in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at NindyNation. And now, citizens, it's the moment we've all been waiting for because this week's deals are hot. With 399 games currently on sale, here are our picks for the 10 best deals at or near their all-time low prices through at least June 26th.
My current obsession is Fury Unleashed, which you can see in this week's brand new Nindies We Love video. If you like Dead Cells, pick this game up. In fact, if you like any kind of action platformer, pick this game up. It's so good, and there's a demo on the eShop right now, so you can check it out for yourself. Fury Unleashed just went on sale 25% off for $14.99. Valfaris has been on sale alongside its spiritual sequel, Slain Back from Hell, quite a bit, but it has yet to see a decent sale on its own. Now, this heavy metal, demon-filled, run-and-gun gore fest is 45% off for just $13.74. As you know, Children of Morta is our 2019 Nindy of the Year. This Diablo-like dungeon crawler features procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! Plus, it's received three major expansions so far, all for free, adding co-op, new game plus, a bunch of tweaks, and it has a brand new character coming soon. Please don't miss Children of Morta. It's currently $14.73, 33% off its regular price. The game I picked up this week is Jamestown Plus, a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up with a cyber western theme that has some of the most beautiful pixel art I've ever seen. The soundtrack is great, the gameplay loop is solid, and the game is just accessible enough to be a great fit for anyone. If you're looking for a shmup, check out Jamestown Plus while it's half off for $8.99. Okay, citizens, we're gonna try this again, cause this happened just a couple of weeks ago. I told you all to go buy Cosmic Star Heroin, I gushed about it, and then it disappeared from the deals page. It's back now for only $1.99. And again, this is my favorite JRPG style game in probably 20 years. The pacing is great, the characters are excellent, the music is superb, and hopefully you can still pick it up when you see this because it's 87% off for only $1.99. Some of you are starting to venture back out into the world, and if you're going to be hanging around with friends, Nidhogg 2 will provide some of the most rowdy and intense two-player competition you'll find, and it's a blast for the people watching as well. Nidhogg 2 is currently 60% off for $5.99. Do you remember Advance Wars? Well, Chucklefish sure does, and their tactical strategy game Wargroove is absolute proof of that. It's a wonderful game with a bunch of free expansions as well, and even a level building community. Wargroove is a steal right now with recent expansions all included, half off, for only 10 bucks. In the mood for a shmup, but you want it to go sideways? Well, if you've got a knack for immature R-rated humor, check out Freedom Finger while it's at its lowest price ever, 45% off for $8.99. This game is hilarious. It includes some incredible voice acting from people you would not expect, and is actually a really solid shooter with a fun, unique hook. All you 90s kids are gonna love the totally rad vibes of Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove. Frankly, it's just really a fun time. It has two-player co-op, it's charming, it's a little rude, and it's always funny. It's hard to explain because it's kind of like a dungeon crawler, but it's a bit more of a puzzle or collect-a-thon. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl Back in the Groove is the sequel to what just might be the original game with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements. Is that an all-time record for the show? I think it might be. Right now, you can get your groove back for $7.49, which is also half off. And finally, the title for the week that I'll be picking up, well, besides Jamestown Plus, is Round Guard, the dungeon crawler with Peggle as its primary gameplay loop. And it's 35% off, down to $12.99. That's what I'm picking up. And you gotta be picking one of these up, right? There's a lot more on sale, so follow me on Twitter at NindyNation for more deals, and let me know there or in the YouTube comments what you're grabbing this week. For more Nindy hijinks, remember there's a lot more that we do on YouTube, including this week's Nindies We Love, featuring five action games that are keeping our Joy-Cons synced, and you can find every podcast episode on Podcast Feeds Sunday evening with our video on YouTube Monday. If you're looking for more out of your Switch than just Nindies, I guess we can let that slide. But make sure you're visiting our friends at the Nintendo Village for all of their great articles, features, shows, and other podcasts that are all available at the NintendoVillage.com. Nindy Nation wouldn't be possible without their support. Another good week in the bag and 70 episodes down. Wow. 
Thank you all so much for being here this week. It's time to go play some more Jamestown and finally check out Roundguard, which I am sure will suck me in. Don't forget to let me know what you're playing too. I love hearing it from everyone. Until next week, I'm Jeff, this has been Nindy Nation Episode 70, and whether it's a Nindy Trifecta, a Nindy No-No, or anything else in between, know that we'll be right here next week to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.